In this video, we're going to look through the main components of the Workspace in Logic Pro called the main window. Now, I want you to go to your dock and click Logic Pro. If it's not already launched, launch it. And from under the file menu, navigate to open the demo song, Jumpstart Demo, that you've downloaded from the Groove3 website, and double-click that to open it. And we're going to look at the main areas here. Now, the main area here is called the tracks area. This main body of the main window. This whole window is called the main window, and this is the tracks area. And it's used to record and arrange musical material in your projects. And we have different types of tracks. We have audio tracks. Now, you can't tell by looking at them at this moment, but this one's an audio track, and this one's an audio track. And we have software instrument tracks, like this one, and this one, and this one. And we have drummer tracks, and that's a third kind of track, which we don't have any of in this particular project at the moment. And when you record or add a loop to your project, it appears as a rectangular region on a track like these. These are regions. That's an audio region on an audio track, and that's a MIDI region on a software instrument track. Now, at the top of the main window here, we have the control bar. And at the center of it, or rather to the left over here, we have transport controls for controlling project playback, stop, start, record, rewind, fast forward. And in the middle part here, we have the LCD, and that's used to view the current playhead position. Right now, we see it's all the way at the beginning, but this is the playhead, and that's where playback or recording starts from. So we use this to display and control the position of the playhead, and we can move it, and we can set the project tempo and the key signature and the time signature here as well. Here we have a master volume slider that controls the overall volume of your project some recording and click settings, and some settings for tuning and cycling or looping certain areas of your project. We have buttons over here and here that open up docked areas attached to the main window. And we're going to start with this one at the far left, the library. Now, the library is used to audition and load patches for the selected track. Now, for example, if I select one of my software instrument tracks, we'll see here that it's loaded in a patch in the synthesizer section in the classics category, and it's loaded in this patch over here. And this one, I've used another synthesizer software instrument patch. And on the audio tracks, there's no patches loaded in at the moment for these. Now, a patch contains a software instrument in this case, and it also contains effects processing or plugins and routings. And those are all used to control the sound of the track. And if I close this up here for a moment, we can see here on this software instrument patch, there's different effects processing plugins here, and there's routings here that send the signal to different areas of the signal path. But that's what a patch is, and we load those from the library. But we can also, in addition to patches, use it to view and select presets for the plugins and other settings when the different areas are selected. So, for example, if I select over here, right now I'm going to view presets for this plugin, this delay plugin. Right now, if I click here, I'm going to view presets for this software instrument, the ES2. So it updates depending on what's selected. Let's hide it for now. Next to this, we have the inspector. And that's been open all along, but I'll open it again. And here we have three main areas. At the top, we use this area to view and edit parameters for the selected region. So this updates based on which region is selected. You'll see it changes here depending on what I select. This area is used to edit parameters for the track, the selected track. And again, this will change and update depending on what track is selected. And at the bottom here, we can hide and collapse these different areas with the triangles. At the bottom, we have a channel strip, which represents the controls for the selected track, volume, pan, routings, plugins, etc. Next to this, we have a quick help button, which opens an area at the top of the inspector, and it'll update and give you little tips and help info, depending on where you point in the interface. Let's turn it off for the moment. Next, we have smart controls, and this opens up a panel at the bottom. This lets you adjust the sound of the selected track, and the controls here can adjust or control parameters on the instrument of the track or any of the plugins or the routing or any of the main channel strip parameters. So they're mapped to control these automatically. We have a mixer button and that's next to it over here and this opens up a mixer panel and this is used to adjust the volume, the pan, the solo, the mute plugin parameters for the whole project. We see the channel strips for the whole project here whereas in the inspector we see it only for the selected track. So this shows us the channel strip for every track in the project, and it also shows us channel strips for auxiliary and output tracks, which don't appear in the main window here. And we can resize this, by the way. All these panels are resizable. So we mix the levels of all the tracks together here, and every track in here has a channel strip represented in the mixer. Let's close that up for now.
Next, we have editors, and this opens up a panel at the bottom, and these update, and they're used to edit the contents of the individual tracks and regions. Now, here we're looking at the piano roll, and it shows the notes in the selected MIDI regions, and it shows them as blocks that can be edited graphically. If I select another one, we'll see the notes update over there, like that. We have a score editor, which displays the MIDI notes as musical notation, and we can add and edit notes here as well. And again, this updates depending on which regions are selected. Now for audio, we have an audio track editor. Let's select an audio track like this, and this changes to an audio track editor, and we use this to display the audio waveform of the regions on an audio track, namely these ones over here. And we can copy, paste, move, trim, split, join, edit the timing, the pitch of the audio material that we're looking at here. We have, let me close this up for a moment, we have some browsers on the end over here. We have a loop browser with this middle button, and this contains a collection of Apple loops, which are prefab loops that'll play back at whatever tempo and key your project is at, and they're great for starting projects up, and I'm using an Apple loop here for the drums. We have a media browser here, and we use this to browse and search and load media from your hard drives if you want to bring audio files into here. And we have a notes section here for keeping notes either on a per project basis or on a per track basis, depending on which track is selected. So that's a little overview. Let's do a quick little recap. This is all called the main window. This is the tracks area where we record and edit and arrange musical material known as regions. We have the control bar up here with various areas, transport controls playback over here. This controls project parameters and the position of the playhead. We have the library button here that we use to load patches and presets. The inspector, which controls the sound of the track and the regions on the track. We have the help tags that we can hide or reveal at the top. Smart controls to control various settings that are loaded into a track. We have a mixer where we can view all the channel strips of the project. We have various editors that change whether we're editing MIDI or audio. And we have some browsers here for viewing Apple Loops or any other content on your hard drive and for keeping notes. See you for more in the next video.